how do we find the cube root of i? Or really, the cube root of any complex number for that matter. Well, it turns out that every complex number other than zero has three different cube roots. And finding those cube roots is actually not too hard as long as you understand the geometry of complex multiplication. So let's suppose we have two complex numbers, we'll call them z and w. And just to be concrete, let's let z be 3 plus 2i and w be 1 plus 4i. And then we can multiply out z times w, and you can check my work here. But it turns out what you end up getting is negative 5 plus 14i. But what does negative 5 plus 14i have to do with the original two numbers from a geometric standpoint? Well, I'm here in Desmos, and I've plotted our two points, 3 plus 2i and 1 plus 4i. And we're kind of thinking of these as being vectors. And now, if we know where these points are, can we predict where the product is going to be, where z times w is going to be? Well, it turns out we can. In fact, here's our z times w. That's that minus 5 plus 14i. How could we predict where that point was going to be based on the positions of these two points? Well, it turns out that the length of this vector, this black vector, is the product of the lengths of these two vectors. So for example, if this length was 4, it's not 4, but if this length was 4 and this length was 5, then this would have a length of 20. Now, just because it has a length of 20 doesn't tell you exactly where the point's going to be because there's lots of points whose distance to the origin is 20, right? They would all lie along a circle centered at zero or centered at the origin with a radius of 20. So how do we nail down exactly where that point is? Well, it turns out what we do, if we zoom in here and look at the angle that this black vector makes with respect to the positive real axis, this angle, that's the sum of this angle plus this angle. So in other words, if we look at 3 plus 2i and we look at this angle, that angle is sometimes called the argument of 3 plus 2i, that angle plus this angle gives you this big angle, and that now nails down exactly where this point is going to be. So why do complex numbers multiply in this way? And how can we use this information to find cube roots? Well, complex multiplication is easiest to understand if we know that every complex number z can be written in so-called polar form. z equals r e to the i theta. Now here, the r is basically the length of the vector, the modulus of z. So if z is a plus b i, the modulus of z would be the square root of a squared plus b squared. And theta is that angle that we were talking about. This is sometimes called the argument of z. Now I should point out that the angle theta is not unique. You can always add or subtract a multiple of 2 pi and get an equivalent angle. Now we're going to use the fact that complex numbers can be written in this way, but if you want to know why, well, I'm going to make a video about polar coordinates that explains why complex numbers can be written this way. And ultimately it comes down to Euler's formula. So Euler's formula says e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine of theta. But we're going to use these polar coordinates to explain complex multiplication. So suppose z and w are written in polar form. So we'll let z be r1 e to the i theta 1 and w be r2 e to the i theta 2. Then what is z times w? Well, z times w will be r1 e to the i theta 1 times r2 e to the i theta 2. And if we rearrange things here, we get r1 times r2 times e to the i theta 1 times e to the i theta 2. But e to the i theta 1 times e to the i theta 2 can be written as e to the i theta 1 plus i theta 2. And you can factor out the i and you get this. So notice our final answer now is of the form r e to the i theta, where r is r1 times r2, and theta is theta 1 plus theta 2. So notice the modulus here is the product of the moduli of the original two complex numbers. OK, in other words, the length of our product is the product of the lengths of the original two complex numbers. And the angle, the argument, is the sum of the arguments of the original two complex numbers. So that's why complex numbers multiply with the geometry that they do. So how can we use this information to help us find cube roots? Well, let's suppose that we have some complex number z. And I'm supposing here that the modulus of z, the distance from this point to the origin, is 8. And I chose a nice number 8 just to keep things simple. A lot of times it would end up being like the square root of something. But 8 is actually really nice because it's a perfect cubed. It's 2 cubed. And let's suppose also that this angle, this argument of z, is 60 degrees, or pi over 3 radians. Then where could we expect to find a cube root of z? So we're looking for a point where if you multiply that by itself three times, if you cube that point, you get this point. 
Well, notice the length, the distance from that point to the origin would have to be two because two times two times two is gonna give us eight. So a cube root of z is gonna to have to lie somewhere on this circle centered at the origin with a radius of two. Now, where on this circle? Well, we're gonna take a point whose angle is one third of this angle, because which would end up being 20 degrees, because 20 degrees plus 20 plus 20 gives us 60 degrees. So we're looking at a point right here. This would be a cube root, where this angle here is 20 degrees. So if you take this point, which has this length and this angle, well, if you triple the angle, you get 60 degrees. And if you take this length, which is two, and multiply it by itself three times, you get eight, which means you end up at this point. Now, there are actually two other answers. Notice that 20 plus 20 plus 20 is equal to 60. But if we were to go one third of the way around the unit circle, so one third of 360 would be 120. So if we were to go 120 degrees further, so end up at a point that's about here, so this would be 140 degrees here. Well, notice that 140 plus 140 plus 140 is 420 degrees, but that's just 360 plus 60. So in other words, if you take 140 plus 140 plus another 140, you end up at this 60 degree angle again. So this would be another point that would be a cube root of this complex number. And if you go another 120 degrees, so 140 plus 120 would be 260. So we end up at a point about right here. Well, 260 plus 260 plus 260 is 780 degrees, which is 720 plus 60. So in other words, the 260 plus 260 plus 260, again, gets you back to this angle of 60 degrees here. So these three points are the cube roots of Z. And then you could figure out how to write each of these three points in terms of the real parts and the imaginary parts. In other words, write them in the form A plus BI. But that's how you find the cube roots of a complex number. So now let's find the cube roots of I. Well, this is actually gonna be pretty straightforward. Now, what I've drawn here is the unit circle. So our point i will be right here. Now, notice the modulus of i, this length is just one, and the angle, the argument of i here is 90 degrees. So where will our cube roots be? Well, we're looking for a point in the complex plane where if we cube it, we get this. Well, remember that we cube the lengths. And so if we cube a length and we get a length of one, what is that length gonna to have to be? It's gonna to have to be a length of one. So in other words, all of our cube roots are gonna lie along this unit circle. And our first one is gonna have an angle that's one third of 90, so 30 degrees. So this point right here, where we have an angle of 30 degrees, that's gonna be one of our cube roots. Well, what is that point? Well, notice this is a right triangle right here. This would be the square root of three over two, and this is one half. So this point, is really the square root of three over two plus one half i. That's one of the cube roots of i. In fact, you can check it for yourself. If you take this number and you cube it, you'll end up getting i. Now, if we add 120 degrees, well, add 120 to 30, we're gonna get 150. So we're gonna get a point about right here. And notice, of course, if this is 150 degrees, this will again, of course, be 30 degrees here as well. And so this length will be the square root of three over two. This length is one half. So notice this ordered pair is really negative, the square root of three over two plus one half i. And that is another cube root of i. And again, you can check that for yourself. Well, if we go another 120 degrees, that's actually gonna take us to right here, this point. And in fact, this point is really just negative i. So the three cube roots of i are this, this, and this. And by the way, it's not too hard to check that if you cube negative i, you get i. So in general, how do you find the cube root of z? Well, first you write z in polar form. So you find the r and you find the theta. And you write it in the form r e to the i theta. Then the cube root of z is gonna be the cube root of r times e to the i, well, theta over three plus two pi k over three, where k is zero, one, or two. So two pi over three is 120 degrees. So that's like adding really zero degrees or 120 degrees or 240 degrees. So that's the general formula for the cube root of z. And similarly, you have a formula for the nth root of z. And you get n different nth roots of any complex number z other than z equals zero.